Hello everyone and welcome to this video and today we're doing something a little bit different we're going to be going through racecraft so what is it and how do we put it into practice in our races to get better results so there are a few things that we're going to have a look at we're going to have a look at overtaking defending when to overtake when not to overtake and when to defend and when not to defend following closely behind other cars how to read the race and just other general strategy tips and hints. So, overtaken. Now the classical way to overtake is in a braking zone and getting the inside of a corner. So you can see here in the clip, we're moving to the inside, we're a little bit later on the brakes and we get given plenty of room as well from Medi and we get that move done. So, very, very important to make sure you're close enough to the car in front that you're trying to pass you don't want to be making dives up the inside from you know two three tenths back you want to be either side by side as you approach the braking zone or only just slightly behind you don't want to be having to make a lot of ground up as you head into the braking zone because that's just more than likely going to cause an accident and possibly take the driver you're trying to pass by surprise so you can see all of these clips i've just shown the driver being overtaken has given us plenty of room and that has meant that there's been no contact involved. So whether you're overtaking or the person being overtaken, you know, cars don't just disappear. Make sure you give enough room so that a car can fit through that space. So, you know, if you're overtaking and the car's still alongside as you exit the corner, just give them enough room on the exit so that they can use the curb, use the racetrack and you're not forcing them off into the grass if you can avoid it. So you can see here we've still got a car on the inside and we've given him enough room and that way we've avoided any contact through that turn one at Monza. Okay so moving on to defending and this is something that I think a lot of drivers on the game don't really know the rules. And the rule is you can make one move to defend a position so if you're on a straight you can move to one side and then it's up to the other driver to pass you on the side that you've left open. So here we've moved to the right hand side of the straight which gives us the inside of turn one and you can see the car behind hasn't been able to make a move around the outside and then again here we can see him on the outside looking in the mirror so we give plenty of room on the outside of the track and maintain that move and you can see here we kind of go for a bit of a late lunge we just don't take as much curb as we normally would there um, but we keep the position. So it's very very important when, to, when you're defending that you're not constantly making moves. So here, I would not be allowed to move to the outside of the track to block him off, okay? So blocking is not allowed. You're allowed to make one move and you have to make it very, very clear which side of the track you're going to um, when you're making that defensive move. So you can see here again, what I said about space, given plenty of space on the outside. And you can see here, the blue car going to look up the inside. We give the room but the move's not really on there anyway. Okay, this next clip then is why you should not move when you're in a braking zone. So you can see here, we're on board with the Mercedes. We've got the Corvette just passing on our outside. And then suddenly he comes across the front and slams on the brakes. And then there's some contact and the Mercedes actually picks up a penalty because of this. So that's something you want to avoid altogether is moving under braking because the driver behind will not be able to tell where you're going to be and there's very very likely to be some contact and you're going to cause an accident. Okay so next we're going to look at why should we not overtake or why should we not defend and this is a really really big one. Okay so any time that you are battling in a race you will lose time to your competitors. So having a look here we've got a car going down our inside we're looking for the switchback bearing in mind we're very close to those other three cars just up ahead and here going towards the death chicane we're side by side very very um, unnerving place to be side by side compromises both our lines through the death chicane there and you can see the car up ahead has bumped into the wall and as I peel out of the slipstream here just have a little look you'll be able to see just how much time we've now lost to those cars ahead and again having another, another look at a different race you can see there's a group of four cars here with fourth in line and you can see the car up ahead going defensive into the hairpin and he's obviously got every right to do that he's not doing anything wrong there at all textbook defending however 
if he's doing that constantly it's going to start losing his time and you can see as we've got onto the back straight we've lost quite a bit of time over those two other drivers just ahead again he's going defensive on the straight at this point all i wanted to do was just give him a nudge and try to work together um, but he's gone defensive we've been forced to the outside compromises both of our exits out of that corner and you can see now we're both out of that slipstream gap slipstream range from those two ahead it just shows you how much time you can lose when you're battling other drivers and you can see here again going very very defensive down into the hairpin i'm not even making it you know making it look like i'm going to go for a, an attack there and he's still defending and yeah that just basically hampers both our races and we're fighting for lower down positions by the end of the race so here i'm in first place i've got the car going up the inside i don't defend it at all just let him pass neither of us lose any time in this situation and then jumping forwards uh, a lap or two you can see as we go to start lap four We'll have a little look behind us and we've opened up a massive gap to the car behind and then essentially it's just a two horse race between the two of us um, because we've eliminated the opposition by not battling and from there we actually went on to win that race as well so here on the car in second place uh, we've got a yellow car up ahead and we're riding on board with the mercedes just behind us so this is an ex another example of where i'm not going to battle i know the driver in the mercedes is very very quick um, i think it was quinton in this race so I'm just going to let him pass here. I'm not going to defend it too much. We're going to let him go to the inside when he looks to, to make that move. Give him plenty of room. Then we're going to break nice and early and make sure that he's going to not lose too much time through that corner. And then from there, jumping forwards a, around the, uh, the end of the lap. So we're going through Parabolica. And now we're in the position to make the move on him again, if we really want to. But instead, what we're going to do is work together as a team to close down that gap to the leader of the race so we're just going to nudge him up the bump there a little bit and he gives us a flash of his hazards to say thank you and you can see doing that down the straight is going to help both of us gain time on the leader and by the end of this lap we've gained a lot of time on that first place and heading into the pits on lap six then and all three of us are going to be in with a chance of winning that particular race so a quick look at how we follow closely behind other drivers without making mistakes. You just want to make sure you lift off a little bit early and just brake a little bit more progressively and you won't lose any time by doing that. So you, there's no need to go in hard. You can see there we've broken a little bit later but we're able to just be very progressive and control our speed based on how fast the car in front is going and we haven't lose, lost any time doing that at all. So next up we're going to have a quick look at strategy and with these new longer pit stops that we have since the latest update it means that the undercut option is very very strong now so it's definitely worth if you're not in the top few you know five or six drivers to start on a slightly harder compound if it's available and make an early pit stop and then use the soft compound and try and make it last until the end of the race and you can see here i've pitted with trevisio and we were in a group with chainsaw the uh, Denmark Danish driver and after our pit stop you can see he comes out well outside the top 10 and it just shows the difference between pitting early and getting that um, fresh tyre on and gaining time over your rivals because with this new long pit stop the chance of you coming out in traffic uh, when you make an early stop is very very small so uh, back when we had very short pit stops, whenever you made a pit stop you'd likely come out in traffic and that would slow you down after your stop. But now without the traffic uh, you can gain a lot of time by pitting early. Okay, my final point of today is that drivers do make mistakes. So the most common mistake you'll see is a driver just simply missing his braking point and then ended up going into the back of you or perhaps trying to avoid you but, but ending up taking you out um, down the inside into a corner. You know, not all drivers are being dirty when you see something like this. They've simply made an error and they can do anything about it. Obviously, if you are that driver, try your best to avoid um, smashing into anyone if you have missed your braking point, but you know, it's, it's not always possible. One way in which you can avoid being taken out by someone who's made a mistake is if you use the view where you have the virtual mirror uh, this can be really really useful because when you see a car 
uh, behind you who is late on the brakes, whether he's going for a move or not, um, you can take avoided action. So sometimes as well, even if he's going for a you know a late on the brakes, Daniel Ricciardo style uh, <laughs> clean move um, into a into a hairpin or something, you'll be able to see that move come in with that mirror. Um, where if you're just relying on the radar, you might notice it just a little bit too late, and then you can end up with some contact. Anyway, I hope this video has helped and given you some information that you may have not um, already known and hopefully you can take it away and put it into action in your next race. If you've got any questions about anything that I've mentioned today, please let me know. And if you've enjoyed the video, um, I'd really appreciate a like and consider subscribing if you haven't already. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.